Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, if you are, where if you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it. So welcome back to Channel on Bushka. And today we're going to have a look at some World of Warships content. Now, you might know recently that I played some games in Blitz with Snake Eyes, uh, my very good amigo and someone who I played thousands upon thousands of games with, both in Water Tanks Blitz and in World of Warships. And uh, he came back and played tanks, and he said, why don't you come back and play some boats with me? So I did, and after three years off, I found that I enjoyed it every bit as much as I used to. <laughs> So I played more games with him and then decided to actually grind a line just to make some content and have some fun. I know, screw me for playing something and having fun. But anyway, here we are. Um, and I'm going to take you through the tier 6 and tier 7 French DDs, destroyers, the Gepard and the Vocalan. I think that's how you pronounce them. Who knows? If French is the language of diplomacy and sensuality, then Australian's probably the language of barbecues and disappointment. But onwards and upwards, here we go. Uh, what have I learnt from three years off coming back and grinding these boats? Well, good golly, Miss Molly, the game's changed a lot. And I think that's true of any title. But the things that I love about it is there's still so many commonalities to the Water Tanks Blitz days that I played. Things like armor profiles, overmatching, uh, gun characteristics, all kinds of... In I mean, I think the nuance is one of the reasons I love these kind of games. Let's go. The two boats have taught me a lot. Um, one thing in particular is I chose these because they don't have smoke and they're activated. very different to any of the destroyers that I've played in the past. They still have torpedoes, but they're terrible at contesting caps and the game has changed tremendously. There's so much radar now, particularly on the tier seven Vokalan when you're playing that you're really going to struggle. They both have the same basic gun loadout. Five 139mm HE spammers. Uh, and the guns themselves are grand. The thing that really makes them interesting is that they have a very, very cool French consumable called Reload Booster. And you also, you also have French Speed Boost, which we'll get to in a, in a wee while. But the Reload Booster means you get 20 seconds firing at double the speed. It's a lot like the Adrenaline Consumable in Water Tank Splits. But that consumable doesn't really exist on other boats. So it's a special thing for the French DDs. And they give up a lot to get it. What it means is that you are basically a destroyer hunter. You want to hunt other destroyers. You can see the arcs and the guns here. They're absolutely terrible. Super high, very, very floaty. They're slower than a tax return. What you want to do is hunt the other DDs. Now, there's something that's come to to mind with this as soon as I started playing this boat was so many CVs now there are so many CVs and I hate them I hate CVs but for all that they're in the game so you've got to learn how to adapt and how to use them uh, and how to play against them and one of the things that that you have to do in this game is get rid of the DDs because although you have torpedoes, your concealment is rubbish. Uh, the best you're going to get to on the uh, on the Vakalan is 6.6 .6, and the best on the Gepard is 6.8. But what you do is absolutely rip the paint off opposition destroyers when you drop your reload booster. And it's something that you have to plan for. You have to really become an ambush predator. Uh, and I, I spent some time watching videos before I started grinding the lines. Obviously, Flamu, the, uh, the bearded monster, was all about being an ambush assassin in the Kleber, which is where I eventually want to wind up, the T-10 and the Mogador. And both of those boats uh, are the pinnacle of this playstyle. But being a torpedo boat is not what you're about. You've got torps and you can use them, but look at it this way. The torps are the same on the Gepard and the Vakalan. Uh, eight kilometers, uh, same damage, same same speed, which is to say nothing, nothing bloody special. 68 knots. It's good and it's good for its tier, but it's certainly not going to make the difference when you are so big and seen from the moon. <laughs> Basically, you're coming up against boats that have under six kilometers of concealment. Uh, a lot of them just are outspotting you by 700, 800 meters. And that means you really have to play well. If there are no CVs in the game, you can quite often cap. Uh, and the reason for this will become obvious when you look at the speed of the ships. You're running around 
with speed flags and all the consumables and your French engine boost, you can get up to 45 knots, which is just electric, which means you get there first. Always, with these guys especially, always cap with your ass facing the enemy because once you get spotted, you don't have any easy means of disengaging. I'll show you what I mean. This is what it's really like trying to cap. Now, the CV said, go to the cap, I'll look after you. And I'm like, really? I'll try and cap. This is a tier nine game. And you can see straight away what it's like. The CVs in this game, I got so many double carry carrier games, like two aircraft carriers on each side with the Vakalan. And this is a best case scenario where your CV is actually overwatching you and trying to stop you from getting hammered. And you're gonna see like, there Shira comes into the cap. He wants to take me on. All the boats in the enemy armada are, are, are aiming at me. Like, <laughs> I'm on fire again. Like, everyone's shooting at me. There's torpedoes coming at me. And this is with the CV covering me, man. This is a train wreck. And here comes the Shira. The Shira's like, oh, he's running. And I'm like, no. My military doctrine is if I see a destroyer, I am going to smash it. And you can see that I'm actually not dropping the reload booster yet until I get both my guns to bear. And then the reload booster just absolutely pants him. Um, you can see, like, this is what you live for. If you get a chance to take out opposition DDs, you've got to, you've got to really run with it. But still, look at this. Look at the planes coming again. I am on 5K and now 4K. And this is with a friendly CV, which is unheard of. The teamwork is just like World of Tanks Blitz, where the only teammate you can rely on <laughs> has got two thumbs and is pointing them both at your chest. There is no way around this, but we get it. And we come out of there with 4,000 hit points. And tier nine is like this. It's so much harder because although you're seeing tier 8 CVs, the real danger is that you're seeing tier 9 destroyers and tier 9 cruisers who have massive amounts of radar and consumables that they can use, like hydro, and it becomes a whole different ball game. And for that reason, the Sigma also, the Sigma being kind of like it's an equivalency in Blitz of dispersion on the enemy battleships and cruisers and everything is just better. So we're in the Gepar at tier six, you're gonna see tier five boats and tier five just battleships and things and tier six CVs really uh, more often than not. The tier seven step up is huge. So the speed is great. You're gonna see here with his Mayhem. Um, I get him in the cap. I He gets spotted by our, I think it was our CV spotted him. Uh, and we're doing, you know, we're flying. We're doing a lot of knots. And we actually are just going to chuck torps at his smoke and then move away. One of the things you have to get used to here solved, is sir. you're going to spend a lot of time tracking who's shooting at you, uh, pushing in, making hit point trades with enemy DDs, trying to make good hit point trades with enemy DDs. Uh, once you clear the DDs, you become the eyes for the team. And if you can get rid of the DDs, then you can start using your torps. The 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 joy of this, obviously the Gepar is the enemy BBs and cruisers are a lot less accurate and a lot less deadly than running into tier nine cruisers and such, which you do in the, the Vakalan. I'm going to give you an example now of some, I mean, <laughs> when people are pushing into you, it's a lot easier to use those torps. The Vakalan also gets uh, three torpedo launches with three torpedoes in each uh, rung, which means you can actually launch six on one side and then as you're running, slow down, slightly angle away and launch three on the other side, which is great when people are pushing uh, and you're on a weak point cap on a weak point flank. You can see these, look at these arcs, they're disgusting. This is like not fun. You could fire from behind islands here, which is actually doable, but I mean, let's be honest, in that case, you're really just farming BB damage and they're just gonna repair most of the fire stuff and you don't have the kind of DPM necessary to, to really be effective like that. Your your DPM is all about using that reload consumable. Uh, there's a Vakalan behind that little Engine corner there. Activated. He's trying to be tricky and keeps coming out into the uh, uh, into the sea lane to launch torps down here and just 
try and do the fire of the island thing at our cruisers. There's a shores with me here. And I'll show you, this is exactly what you were built for. You're setting up that, that ambush. If he's not going to use his mobility, uh, you can absolutely set up ambushes. And this is where the torques are brilliant. The shores is going to stop him from running. If he, if he runs, I'm looking at the island there. If he runs to the north, he's going to go broadside to the shores. And the shores will absolutely rip him a new one. So I'm going to launch torps across that channel. And then I am going to engage the Vakalan. And I'm going to use, I'm waiting for my reload consumable to come up. You can see that's just come online now. My consumable at the bottom of the screen, second from the right, next to my big propeller there, which is my speed boost. And there he is. Now I'm leading him as if he is going to run, but he sees the shores and he's forced to turn back in because if he goes broadside, he's dead. He's got no smoke. Uh, and he, although the Vakalan is excellent in terms of speed, its rudder shift is not great. Like its turning circle is ra rather large for a DD. And there's the torps I planned out earlier. The ambush is complete. He's now turning into torps. That's the kind of thing you want to do with this boat. It's a really, really lovely boat for that. You want to spend all your time like ducking out from behind islands and things, waiting patiently for IGN destroyers and that to go, oh, hello, didn't see you there. Uh, that's fine. And this is where your arcs don't matter because you're so close. You're just so close that it doesn't make any difference. Um, and you can make trades. You've got the hit points. Even without your, your torpedo booster, your torpedo booster, your reload booster, you, you can do that kind of thing. And I just fight. basically, so I just hunt DDs, hunt DDs, hunt DDs, Brother hunt assault, DDs. Sir. And that is such a vital part Enemy of your sunk. of your overall Potato Fest team, being the eyes for your team, clearing DDs from them, like rushing smoke, finding positions where you can just rip people apart. Like, watch this poor grub. It's like, oh, hello, there's a... It's, this is literally like two Vakalans firing at him at once. And he has no chance. He's done. He's absolutely done and dusted. Yeah. Enemy destroyer founder. And your team will appreciate that. They really will. They'll love it. It's not like a Grammy, uh, Grammy Ashi, which I I love and I still play uh, to this day. Um, the first boat I played when I came back was the Grammy. I love that boat. Um, that's just like a long-range HE spammer with smoke, consumables. It's got absolutely everything. This is an ambush stealth predator. You've got to come out from behind islands. You've got to find the weakest link. You've got to crap all over it and then Don't head back and run away from the rest of the CV potato clickers. I hate CVs! <laughs> anyway. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you don't mind me posting some of the boats content heaven forbid that i should play games and have fun and then post videos about it and uh We've yeah sunk an enemy look after yourselves game. stay safe in the battlefield uh make sure you hang out with your wang out and be nice to your mum and just generally be good humans uh, i'll leave you with this little one watch this poor watch this hataharu which, which he just does not does not see this coming and he gets screwed over by the cv he's got his aa turned on thinks he's safe so he's detected for all and sundry to see and he just cops an absolute bucket full of baguette firing french love see you boys and girls and as always stay safe on the battlefield bye for now Destroyer sunk.